everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Molly, and today I'm going to be watching, reviewing, and reacting to Season 8, Episode 1 of Game of Thrones! Ah, so if you haven't been here before, you are not aware, but everyone else here is, that I am a massive Game of Thrones fan. Um, it's my favorite show of all time. I've been watching since the very beginning. I actually read the books, at least the ones that were around um, before the show came out. I even have the dragons tattooed on my arm. That's the extent of my kind of obsession with the show. So I've been anxiously waiting for the past nearly two years for this, the final season, and anxiously waiting much, much longer than that for a resolution to this, this epic story. Um, so I'm, I'm really, really excited right now, and I want to get into this as soon as possible. So first, I just want to quickly say a thank you to everyone who's come out to support me on Patreon. And if you are new and you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, I'll put a link in the description below. I do have full-length um, reaction videos up there. There will be full-length reactions for every one of the Game of Thrones episodes for Season 8. I also am just now starting a new Game of Thrones um, reaction series with my dad, who's never seen it before and never doesn't know anything about Game of Thrones. Um, and the first regular version of that is currently up on Patreon as early access, and the first extended full-length reaction is also on Patreon right now as well. So if you're curious, interested, check that out, but it'll also be up on YouTube really soon, so you can wait and check it out there too if you'd like. Alright, so I'm not going to waste any more time here because I've been waiting almost two years and I'm really impatient. So, let's go. Episode 1 of Season 8, Game of Thrones. Yes! <sighs> not important. We named you King in the North. John's like, does no one get what I've been saying? Joe, the threat is real. Thanks to his courage. We have brought with us the greatest army the world has ever seen. We have brought two full-grown dragons. And soon the last army will ride north to join our cause. <laughs> he really, he's saying it. He knows they don't want to hear that. I know, I know. Our people haven't been friends in the past. Uh -huh. But we must fight together now. Or die. Last time we spoke was at Joffrey's wedding. A miserable affair. How is moments? <laughs> She's like, oh shit, oh yeah. Yes, it was a bit hard to explain why my wife fled moments after the king's murder. We both survived. I'm sure you weren't thrilled to hear the Lannister armies marching north. <laughs> you have every right to be fearful of my sister. No one fears her more than I do, but I promise you'll be safe. Cersei told you her army was coming north to fight for you. She did. And you believed her. She has something to live for now. I believe she wants to survive. I used to think you were the cleverest man alive. I mean, she's the only one that's right. <laughs> I guess, but... Come on, Santa. And here's Bran, just creepily staring at everyone. How did you survive a knife through the heart? I didn't. Arya, she's been in years. Needle. Have you ever used it? Once or twice. I've used your help with Sansa. She doesn't like your queen, does she? Sansa thinks she's smarter than everyone. She's the smartest person I've ever met. Mm. Are you defending her? <laughs> you. I'm defending our family. 
so is she. And my family too. I've given her justice, an army, and the Iron Fleet. Yet, she gives me no sign of affection. My heart is nearly broken. You're insolent. I've executed men for less. They were less than men. Really? Is she doing this because she feels like she has to? Doesn't seem like like a does she even want to? Like, what? I what? the dragon burn up a thousand that is to me. Burn up something like Queen, I go where you command. You want to go to Winterfell to fight for the Starks? Go. Mm. Yeah. What is dead may never die. What is dead may never die. Kill the bastards anyway. Oh my god. They're never gonna see each other again, are they? Theon, Theon's gonna die at Winterfell. He's gonna go fight. Oh. He's gonna die. John Snow. <laughs> John, Gregor's not gonna kill you if Danny doesn't want that. Gregor looks a lot more developed this season. Very green and
I offered to let him retain his lands and titles if he bent the knee. He refused. At least I'd be allowed home again. Now that my brother's the law. Your brother stood with your father. No, but he actually loved his brother. Thank you, Your Grace, for telling me. Um, uh, may I? Of course. See, this is why you should have just listened to Tyrion. Daenerys. She executed my father and brother. They were prisoners. She didn't tell you. And your father... Your real father was Rhaegar Targaryen. You've never been a bastard. You are Aegon Targaryen, true heir to the You lied to me all my life. Your father, Ned Stark, he promised your mother he'd always protect you. And he did. Robert would have murdered you if he knew. You're the true king. Season eight, and that was a pretty crazy way to end it. Um, Bran, waiting for an old friend. <laughs> he meant Jamie. He meant he knew Jamie was coming, and he was waiting for Jamie. Um, okay, so it's pretty cool that they chose to end on them making eye contact. You know, considering the parallel to the first episode of season one, and there obviously were a lot of parallels to the first episode of season one here. Um, I thought. Nikolai did a really good job just with that moment there of the look on his face when he saw Bran and I'm glad that they gave us that shot um, to kind of signify the weight of it in Jamie's Jamie's realization. It, it's pretty clear in that moment that he wasn't, you know, thinking through what he was going to have to encounter when he showed up at Winterfell, but there he is. and. Although they're making it out to be fairly ominous and I'm just anticipating something next episode where, you know, obviously Jamie's gonna have some conflicts with the various people he's gonna meet up with here. I don't know how Daenerys is gonna feel about him being there or Sansa or, you know, a lot of the Northerners. But, you know, Bran, with the current state that he's in and his, his goal is just defeat the Night King, it's... I'm not really anticipating him being particularly spiteful or, or unhappy about Jamie's presence. If anything, he'll probably just be like, hello, all creepy. And and there's there's been some speculation, you know, I thought this myself, that maybe the person that he was talking to in the trailer where he was saying everything that you've done um, brought you where you're supposed to be, uh, that maybe that was Jamie that he was talking to. And I think that that would be good. That would be interesting to see, so... But I'm also very curious to see Jamie's interactions with a lot of people, but Danny in particular, because obviously, you know, he killed her father, and the only times that they really interacted so far is when he tried to kill her on the battlefield, and then when they were in their peace, peace summit in King's Landing. Um, and at that time, you know, they didn't really speak much except for like a second. Um, so I'll be very curious to see that happen. <laughs> So let's see, a lot of things, a lot of things happened really quickly this episode. Um, we had John riding Rhaegal, so obviously many of us had predicted for a long time that John would eventually end up riding Rhaegal, being that Rhaegal is named after his father and John is a Targaryen. Um, and once, you know, Viserion was lost, 
Viserion. Um, then it seemed even more likely that, you know, the last two Targaryens would end up riding these two dragons together into battle. But, um, it happened really, really quick this season, and I'm, I'm interested in the fact that it, it happened not because they all had already found out that Jon was a Targaryen and Danny said, hey, you're a Targaryen, you can ride this dragon with me. Um, no, she just kind of suggested to him, why don't you try riding Rhaegal? Like, she just wanted him to, which is, is kind of curious, but also I think is really indicative of how much she actually does feel for Jon and care about Jon, that she's willing to allow him to try that, and, um, and that Rhaegal was willing to let him even ride him suggests also how much she must care about and trust Jon because Rhaegal felt that way. Though, though that stare down from Drogon was pretty hilarious. Obviously, Jon just like, mm. I'm disappointed we didn't get Ghost, by the way. That reminded me, but I've, I've, we've been promised that there will be Ghost to this season. So I'm hoping next episode we'll get some Ghost. Um, so moving on from that... Um, basically it seems like no one in the North is trusting of Daenerys, and this isn't a shock, you know, we kind of anticipated there was going to be a lot of that, and that Sansa in particular would not be fully welcoming to her at first. Um, I was a little surprised that Arya seems to be more agreeing with Sansa there, and Jon saying, Arya, can you kind of help me out in this situation? And uh, Arya sticks up for Sansa, and you know, I like I said, I'm glad that she stuck up for Sansa. I like that a lot. Um, but at the same time, all of you guys, really, you gotta pull it together here. Everything that Jon's trying to tell you about, you know, we need Daenerys' help, we should follow Daenerys, she's got a dragon, she's got all these armies, she's come here to try and help us, and really, who is king, queen, doesn't matter that much right now. I mean, he's correct about that, so maybe everyone should kind of put that sort of thing aside for the time being. Um, and to be honest, I have a feeling that Sansa and Arya will be able to do that maybe faster than Sam, which is the one instance where I kind of don't know how well that's gonna play out now. I mean, that was a pretty hard scene to watch where Sam found out about his father and brother and, you know, even with his father who was cruel to him and, like, threatened to kill him and was a horrible person, basically, Sam was gonna be, um, not definitely happy that he was dead, but then it really devastated him about his brother and, um, I was surprised with the kind of forcefulness that Sam showed when he was speaking to John, you know, saying, would you, would you have done that? And that's not, Sam hasn't really been like that in the past, but it's clear that he's feeling a lot of, of, I guess, hostility towards Danny for, for that, which I suppose makes sense. But also he clearly is adamant in his belief that John should be king. Um... And so I'm going to get to that scene, that scene in a minute, but let me just touch upon a couple other things first. Um, Sansa and Tyrion, that was an interesting interaction. I'd like to see more interaction between them going forward. Um, I've been, been kind of curious about their respective roles in this season, especially because they're not really like on the fighting side or the magical side. So in terms of their ability to contribute with defeating the Night King, I don't know how much they're gonna play in there, but they certainly maybe could work together for some things like dealing with Cersei, I don't know. But I'd like to see more interaction. Sansa kinda cut him pretty quick there, but I mean, she was right. She was right not to trust Cersei, so. Um, and, and then we had Arya reunions with a ton of people. Her reunion with Jon was adorable. I mean, that I actually felt, like I said, um, that was the most Arya that she has been um, for years on this show. Just the, the look on her face when, when she ran up and hugged him and he looked so happy too. And it was, that, was, that was a nice little scene. Um, I understand maybe some people would want it to be longer, but for me, I mean, I'm, I thought it was really well done. She reunited with the Hound and they were the same with each other as always, but I mean, you could see in Roy McCann, kind of like in his eyes, that, that he was happy to see her even though he's trying to be like all stubborn and, and the houndish and and the Arya Gendry scene was was pretty cute. You can you can see that definitely building up to something which people have been wondering about since season one, you know, that I have a son, you have a daughter, we'll join our houses thing, which obviously wasn't gonna be Sansa and Joffrey, Arya and Gendry, and here it is, so 
curious to see how this is going to develop, but uh, and they're actually going there, it seems, so it's interesting. Um, in King's Landing, we have Cersei ends up sleeping with Euron, and after everything going back and forth, you know, maybe she kind of does sort of like him or is interested in him, I don't know, but I think it's probably mostly a combination of one, that she's just trying to continue to manipulate him and use him for her own ends. And she's always, you know, she even told Sansa about this, use sex as a manipulation tool. And then two, you know, if she's pregnant and, and Jamie is no longer in her life, I guess, and she's not going to be going out and making some grand statement that he's the father of this baby, I guess she would hope maybe she could convince Euron he's the father and do the same thing that she did with Robert. Um, maybe. So maybe that's what her plan is with that. I don't know. Um... And then she also turns around and tries to hire Bronn to murder Jaime and Tyrion if they survive battles in the north, which is just like Cersei, I guess, though I'm honestly I am surprised that she's putting a hit out on Jaime. I'm not surprised about Tyrion, but you know, she was clearly bluffing when she threatened to kill Jaime at the end of last season. I didn't feel like, you know, I, I kind of imagine that maybe she still hoped in the future that that could be fixed, but I don't know. I guess she just felt so betrayed she just wants to murder him now. So that's <sighs> special, but I gotta believe that Bronn isn't gonna do it. Like, that he's just gonna take her gold and shit, and that maybe he'll go and try to warn them, or he'll just go off on his own, but he's not actually gonna try and assassinate them. I gotta believe. I have to believe. <laughs> oh, no. Um... All right, all right. So let's get let's get to it. Let's get to the the big thing of this episode is that it actually happened in the first episode near the end. We have Sam telling John who he is, who his parents are, that Ned lied for the sake of protecting him so he wouldn't get murdered, and that he's really Aegon Targaryen. I mean, he called him sixth of his name. I mean, that wouldn't really necessarily totally align with the books and everything, but we're going with it sixth of his name and that he's the rightful king and I mean I think that Kit did a good job Kit Harrington did a good job with looking like he was trying to process that it was obviously going to be a huge and difficult thing for John and he seemed very much like obviously in denial at first just saying no my father would not lie to me about that sort of thing um but, I mean, I also felt like you could see as Sam was explaining it, you know, it was to protect you. Um, he promised his sister that he would keep you safe. That I, I personally felt like you could see a look in his eyes as though he was maybe sort of realizing that, yeah, actually this kind of does put a lot of pieces into place. Because he also does know Ned was honorable and that it, it's weird that he would ever cheat. And why would he never tell him who his mother was if she was even alive? You know, why was it such a cryptic secret? I'm sure that that would help, you know, things are probably falling into place for him as he's thinking about this. And, you know, maybe some other things he'll start realizing, you know, why is the dragon's okay with me and I can ride one? Um, why was I brought back from the dead? This is gonna make sense now, maybe. Um, prince that was promised? Mm -hmm. So, I, I, like, I don't imagine all of that went through his head in that exact moment, but you could see the wheels starting to turn. Um, but then I'm very curious about what Sam said um, about, you know, Daenerys, you bent the knee to her, you gave up your crown for the good of your people. Don't you think she would do the same? But why would it be for the good of the people for, for why would it save them? For Danny to bend the knee to John instead, you know, how is that going to make a difference unless Sam is saying that, you know, the Northmen don't want to and won't ever follow Danny, but if she bends the knee to you and then her people and the people in the South also find out who you truly are and then maybe everyone will be more likely to unite behind you than they would behind her? I don't really know about that. I don't know if, the, I mean, the Dothraki aren't gonna <laughs> follow anyone other than Danny. Um, and I mean, maybe, yeah, Davos is, is, is kind of right to say that the Northerners and the Wildlings maybe aren't gonna follow anyone with Jon. Well, so maybe the obvious solution is that, you know, Davos was proposing that they have an alliance, they get married. Well, that's the obvious solution is that they get married, but that they rule as co-equals. And that seems like the clearest thing to do as opposed to just having one being the king or queen. 
Um, and I'm hoping that they don't play out the whole drama of, of Sam and some people like in the North really pushing that John must be the king and then Danny's people saying Danny must be the queen and that there's a conflict about that. I'm sure we'll get some of that, but I'm hoping that we get past that relatively quickly because as Bran is shouting at everyone, we don't have time for this. There's bigger things to worry about. And, you know, John himself has been saying that this is something that you guys can figure out after you all work together to stop this army of dead men from destroying everything in the world. Um, yeah, I don't know. But I am, I'm honestly, I'm a little concerned with how upset Sam is and adamant about that because he does, as Bran said, John does trust him more than anyone. He does listen to his advice. Um, yeah, so I feel like he might have more of an impact, his words have more of an impact than, say, Sansa saying that she's suspicious or Lyanna Mormont or anything. I don't know. So that's a little concerning, but I have to have hope overall that 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 will be put aside. I feel like Jon's biggest concern isn't going to be, you know, who should rule so much as just coming to terms with what he now knows about who he truly is. Um, and so maybe it's good timing that Theon is on his way because he can return the favor to Jon from last season where Jon tried to say to him, you know, you're a Greyjoy and a Stark, so now Theon can return the favor. Though, I really think Theon's gonna die. Um, in this Battle of Winterfell we're going to be having, some major characters are gonna have to die in order for it to have significance, and I don't foresee any of the Starks or our, like, main major cast dying there because we'll still have three episodes to go afterwards um, because it's supposed to happen in episode three. So I kind of predict that we're going to lose Theon, probably Jorah, Jorah. And then, you know, if, if Tormund and Beric and Ed and all of them make it down to Winterfell, there'll probably be possible casualties too. I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be a brutal episode, I'm sure. But next, next week I'm pretty excited about because I do think that we're going to get a lot of the Jamie stuff that I was talking about early on and that'll be really interesting to see as well as I'm sure that now Danny has to be told the truth about John, and I wouldn't be surprised if that was next episode too, so very curious, but okay everybody, well that was awesome, I'm gonna have to watch it again, and maybe I'll come back at some point midweek to kind of think about other things as I process more, um, but for now, you know, if you have thoughts, any ideas, questions, comments for me, do leave them down in the comment section below. And other than that, I'll just say thank you so much for joining me for this awesome premiere, and hopefully I will see you next time. Bye.